All right, so let's get started by just reading the problem statement. Given an array of integers, return two indices such that they add up to a specific target. So the key things to remember here are an array of integers. We want to return two indices such that the values at the indices of the array add up to a target. Let's take a closer look. So in the lead, in the lead code problem to sum, we're given two parameters. The first one is an array. The second one is a target. And what we want to return is two indices. We know that there's exactly uh, one right answer to this problem, so we don't have to worry about any edge cases. So we want to find these two indices, i and j, such that the value, the value at i and j of the array add up to the target. So here, here we have an example. So suppose that we have a target that's equal to 9 and an array that's equal to um, 2, 15, 11, and 7. So let's just manually go through and see how we can solve this problem. What we want to do is find two indices in this array that add up to 9. So again, I'm going to just draw the indices here. So we know that um, just looking from the array here, we know that 2 and 7 add up to 9. So what we want to do is not return 2 and 7, but we would want to return we want to return 0 and 3. That would be the solution to this problem. That's just a quick example. So now let's dive into a um, solution. So the first solution that we can come up with um, is going to be the brute force solution. So let's draw this out again. Suppose we have 2, 7, 9, and 15, and our target is equal to, let's say, 17. Or actually, let's better yet, let's say the target is equal to 20, 24. How's this going to work? So the brute force solution is going to state that we start um, our index at uh, the first one, and then we iterate through every single other value in the array and see if their sum is equal to 24. So in this case, we're going to check 2 with 7, 9, 15. Then in the second iteration of the loop, we're going to check with 7, 9, and 15. And then we're going to check 9 with 15. So this is a pretty straightforward uh, solution that most people will come up with on their first try of this problem. It's going to require a nested for loop and just iterate through the indices 0 through n and then 1 through n. I think it's n minus 1 or something. So that's a pretty straightforward solution. Let's look at the complexity of this solution, the brute force solution. So in terms of complexity, um, we know that we have a, again, a nested for loop here, right? And because it's a nested for loop that's going to iterate through the entire array twice in a nested format, we know that it's going to be n times n. Or more specifically, it'll probably be something more like n times n minus 1, which, you know, ends up being big O of n squared anyway. So that's going to be the time complexity of this solution. And now if we dive into the space complexity, we actually don't store any extra um, like variables except from like maybe one thing that checks the sum of these two variables. So that's just going to be constant. So we're going to have a solution where the time complexity is n squared and the space complexity is O of 1. That's a pretty good solution, but let's see if we can do better. Is there a better way to do this? 
And of course, I'm asking that because I have the answer, which is yes, there is. And the more efficient way to do this would be using a hash map. So let's see how this solution would work with a hash map, right? So if the target is equal to 26, and we want to use a hash map, let's see. What we can do is in the hash map, we can store the complement of 2, or whatever value that we're currently at, and check every time if that value exists. So let's go through a simple um, thing that the hash map can do. So in the hash map, it's currently empty, but we're going to iterate through this array using a for loop. For i equals 0 through n, we're going to iterate. And as we iterate, we want to put the complement of 2 inside of our hash map. So what's the complement of 2 in this case? So we know the target is equal to 26. And the next time uh, what we want to insert into the hash map is going to be 26 minus 2, which is going to be 24. So 24, and at the value that we insert 24, we want to add the um, we want to add the index that um, exists for whatever two is in. So in this case, it's zero. So we're going to put zero here, and then what we can do is go through the entire array. So in this case, the second value, which is going to be 7, so 26 minus 7, 19. So 19, 1, then you have 15, 2, and then you have 11, 3. So we can just go through this entire array and we're going to add every single value, the complement of that value, and we're going to insert the um, index of that value as the value. <laughs> so we have the keys and then the values. So now we can just go through another for loop for i equals 0 through n. And all we have to do, in this case, we have the array, which is to go as we're going through this array we want to check if we have seen this exact value before or the complement of this value so every time we check we just check if complement exists and we know that a complement exists because in the lead code it said there's exactly one solution so we know that a complement is going to exist um, in, in the hash map. We want to include the index of the current of the current uh, value and the index of the so we have key value as you guys remember so we want to take the index of the um, current one and then the value of whatever is the complement of the current um, number so we want to say complement dot get uh, key, which is going to return the value. So if we look at the complexity of this, the time complexity is actually going to be order of n, because we, although we are doing two for loops, we are doing them separately. Uh, one through n. So we're doing these two for loops separately, which is going to make sure that we don't venture into the n squared complexity for the time. And of course, the space here is also going to be n because we're going to be holding a hash map that has keys and values to 
um, every single value inside of the array itself. So in this case, the complexity is a lot faster, but the space is also a lot bigger. However, in real world applications, um, it's more important to remember that we can easily add more space, but time is like not something that we can easily get back. For example, a user will really care more about how fast an application is rather than how much memory it's taking up inside of their, you know, computer or something. They don't really care about that. People just care about how fast something is. That's all we want. Cool. All right, so now let's take a look at the solution. So here we have the solution here. Again, we're initializing the hash map and we're gonna call it complements. And of course, we're gonna initialize an array that's empty and it's gonna be results. Now I did a small optimization here and we're only gonna be using one for loop because using a second for loop turns out is actually unnecessary. That does not end up changing the time complexity so it's still going to be O of n. So here, let's take a look at what we're doing. Uh, we're going to enumerate through the numbers. And this, again, this numbers is the array of numbers and the target is the target. So we're going to enumerate the numbers and we're going to get the index and the number. And as soon as, um, uh, the first thing we want to do is make sure that um, if a number does not exist in a hash map that we add it to the hash map. So here, that's what I'm doing. So if um, the complements hash map does not have the number, right, then we want to add the complement uh, of this number to and the index. And then, otherwise, we know that the complement of this current number already exists in our complements map right so basically otherwise we can just um, let's see we can just take the result because we could just say okay this is what we've seen before because the value at let's see the value at complements number is going to be the index of the complement of this all right it's a little confusing but um yeah so let me draw this out here okay so initially in the first iteration of the loop the hash map is going to be empty right so we're going to go into this statement right here and what it's going to say is since it's empty we're going to add the complement of two, um, so complement of two is the target minus two. So 26 minus two is 24, and the value of that is zero. And then in the second iteration of the loop, we're gonna say, um, we're gonna first check if the complement is null. So the complement, uh, so seven does not exist in this array. So we're going to say um, 26, so 19, 1. And then we're going to insert 11 in this case. Um, so we're going to say 15, 3. And now, when, when we're iterating on the final number in this array, 15, uh, what we're going to notice is that we're going to get into this if statement and we're going to realize that it's not none. So a value already exists. So in this case, we're going to return the result, right? So the result is now going to be the complements of num. So um, let's see. The complement, so what we want is the complement of the number that we're currently at, which is 15, is equal to 2, and then the index right now is equal to 3. So now the results array is going to equal um, 2 and 3. 
and yeah. So that's pretty much how this code works right here. Cool. Thanks for watching. Um, see you next time.